good morning everyone so i hope all of you are able to handle the present uh, situation um of lockdown in your own ways and then trying to bring in a balance in your day to day lives so today we are uh, looking at um a topic which is uh, slightly different from the usual flow cross cultural marriages and uh, counseling role so when we say cross cultural marriages we are looking at um, interreligious interracial and um, um international kind of um, you know heterosexual relationships here mainly we are looking at from the perspective of how these uh, cross cultural marriages are uh, looked at the different perspectives and what is the psychological understanding of these kind of um, couples cross cultural couples and uh, what are the problems as well as uh, in terms of challenges and uh, strengths and how counseling can be of any significance these are the aspects that we are going to cover in today's topic looking at uh, a cross cultural marriage when we say cross cultural marriage we are mainly uh, looking at uh, from the indian perspective if we have to look at it is mainly um the social stratification and the economic uh, background that mainly the caste system uh, that uh, holds a weightage in indian marriages even though the increase in the love marriages still uh, the kind of assumptions or the dilemmas um that one holds about these um, cross cultural marriages is still uh, Uh, a topic of conflict so most of the times uh, there are uh, concerns related to cultural dilution uh, that uh, their children cannot uh, adjust to these kind of cultures the mainly the concerns by the parents especially from the female side uh, where uh, usually uh, the freedom factor is very less compared to Uh, other countries so in india the freedom that is given to a woman or a girl to choose their own spouse is very limited so looking at 2050 uh, as uh, going to be a more of a cross cultural marriages significant increase is uh, it's already from past 2 to 2 and a half decades that the kind of marriages have gone a significant changes and still it is going to move on further towards these kind of marriages so it's important that um, parents as well as uh, the youngsters understand what what are the uh, kind of aspects that we need to look at when you are choosing uh, you know um, life partners from the cross cultural uh, um, kind of uh, different cultures and then at the same time the parental and the community reactions to these kind of marriages so looking at the psychological aspects mainly here uh, like i said in indian system it is a caste system that has an uh, overweight over other uh, kind of uh, um, um factors so the mobility social mobility as well as uh, the financial kind of security uh, is slowly you know breaking the barriers of this community and uh, familial uh, family kind of uh, you know restrictions that are coming into picture so mainly when uh, couples are choosing cross culturally it is uh, the mobility the social mobility the physical attraction or the cultural uh, generally we have discussed in our previous uh, marriage related videos that it is the opposites that attract and uh, they complement rather than looking at a similar culture generally people who are uh, 
uh, more keen on um, uh, taking uh, less risks or less uh, adjustment, prefer an intracultural kind of uh, espouse while um, uh, generally uh, getting into a cross-cultural or uh, a kind of, uh, you know, uh, sometimes the youth can also get into these kind of marriages as a as a way of rebellion or uh, family related uh, kind of other stressful factors where they may want to kind of uh, rebel against the culture that is prevailed in their own families and then choose partners from the cross cultural um, from the different cultures. So looking at uh, psychologically, it is uh, mainly looked at from the perspective of uh, the kind of similarities and differences these couples bring in into the marriage. Any marriage for that matter, other than the cross-cultural one as well has, uh, you know, the kind of uh, um, attachment styles that we have discussed about and the kind of adjustments one need to make, the kind of uh, uh, control systems that happen and uh, all these problem-solving approaches that we have discussed in our previous videos uh, are equally present in these cross-cultural marriages. Apart from that, there can be other uh, identity and uh, a kind of, uh, you know, prejudice or discrimination kind of issues coming into pictures. Uh, when it comes to the kind of uh, rituals that one, one uh, uh, takes at different life transformations, like uh, marriage ceremonies or um, for that matter, child rearing practices, it is the cultural uh, patterns or the rituals that one uh, carries on for generations, uh, having a kind of sentimental value or uh, a kind of cultural value to their behaviors. So when the couples and families are able to see them as having a meaningful, um, you know, um, meaning to their behaviors culturally, then uh, better adjustments can be made. But if one spouse is uh, more focused on uh, the other's other spouse molding only to their culture, then the problems can become a little more, uh, you know, culturally uh, more more in terms of uh, um, adjustment or the other issues can crop up from these kind of uh, um, expectations from each other as well as from their families. So looking at what kind of problems that these cross-cultural marriages can bring in, um, the, the various factors that are looked at in, in different national surveys and uh, a different research kind of uh, scientific research, mainly looking at the personality factors which hold a value in any marriages, more so in cross-cultural marriages, like I mentioned, it is the personalities and the locus of control, the attachment styles, as well as uh, the kind of, uh, you know, attitudes and uh, the kind of belief system, value system that one holds. So all these personality factors are equally influencing factors in cross-cultural marriages. Uh, looking at cultural factors per se, so culturally, where uh, uh, if the family's reactions are too strong and uh, um, there are uh, negative reactions involved here, and then they are considered uh, the choosing of this partner, uh, usually uh, isolation or uh, the kind of discrimination that the couple might go through uh, can be an added stress culturally. So if, if there are other, uh, other issues related to, especially when there are children, uh, there are worries about the prejudices that the children might have to go through uh, in these kind of marriages. And then uh, the social acceptance factor, all these factors uh, has to be looked into when you are looking from the cultural perspective. And uh, there can be other psychological aspects, like I said, the differences and similarities 
that can come with the culture and the kind of familial backgrounds that each spouse brings in into the marriage system uh, need to be looked at from a much more broader perspective rather than the initial physical attraction or the financial security perspective. A lot of adjustments and openness and understanding is of more importance here rather than um, trying to pull each other towards the other culture. So sometimes uh, the couples might, uh, you know, bring in different kinds of adjustments by uh, one spouse completely going with the other spouse culture, uh, we are making it like, uh, you know, we are following this one spouse. Uh, as a couple, we will follow this culture. Sometimes the couples can also make a midpoint where they, ca they can arrive at a kind of a midpoint, making compromises and adjustments. And sometimes there can be a much more, uh, you know, broader perspective by bringing in uh, the the both cultural aspects and creating a new cultural frame as a as a family as a couple or as a family uh, bringing in much more broader uh, aspects of their cultural uh, value system or belief system and creating a kind of uh, culture of their own so these are the various possibilities that can happen psychologically so looking at the kind of problems or the kind of challenges, uh, as well as the strengths that these uh, cross-cultural marriages can have, uh, looking at the challenges, uh, mainly here, uh, like I said, the familial uh, reactions or um, the kind of acceptance that the couple has in these uh, uh, communities where they are, the physical location also is an important aspect. So the place where they are living and the and the, uh, the support of extended uh, family uh, sometimes if if one of the spouse is coming from from a kind of system where uh, uh, it is more of a collectivism kind of a culture where uh, uh, it is more like a cultural uh, culturally it is uh, the interdependence of the members uh, that is considered to be a strength whereas in certain uh, if the other spouse is coming from an individualism kind of a culture uh, where uh, the individual life of the family of the couple or uh, the nuclear family or the nuclear uh, as a couple it is more important so there can be a lot of challenges coming in this process uh, so ultimately it is the couple who has to figure out uh, as to how they, they are going to uh, bring in those adjustments and understanding between their cultural uh, uh, differences as well as the sim similarities. So we can't always look at uh, these kind of cross-cultural marriages only from the perspective of uh, that it can always bring in uh, a kind of conflict and a high rise of diversities because of these cross-cultural marriages not necessarily uh, so any any couple intracultural or uh, cross cultural any couple uh, the main uh, aspects of marriage of respecting each other mutual understanding and making a kind of uh, compromises and adjustments holds a basic foundation and more so also the same thing works with the cross cultural marriages uh, with little additional um, kind of um, a little more broader perspective to look at the cultural differences. So the kind of child rearing practices or the different rituals that are done at different uh, uh, lifespan uh, trans, uh, transitions, developmental transitions, uh, where uh, their way of looking at it is much more important in either bringing in more conflict or becoming more broader and more um, uh, intimate and more closer as a couple. So looking at the strengths, the couple can look at it as a way of developing a broader perspective uh, by mixing the different cultural aspects and coming at a, at a kind of uh, their own way of looking at um, the uh, 
whether it is a lifestyle or whether it is their value system, uh, they can introduce to their children a much more broader perspective and then it can bring in much more a global kind of value system rather than uh, looking at only one culture or the other. So when it comes to counseling aspects, generally when parents approach, so they, they usually, this is my experience as a clinical psychologist and uh, couple therapist, where uh, generally parents are uh, more in terms of a shock or alarmed um, that it's going to be the culturally, there are going to be dilutions or uh, uh, especially when it is a girl child, uh, uh, generally they look at it as that, you know, they cannot adjust and then there can be more problems. And if they are going to come with more problems, it's difficult for us to adjust. And then a lot of uh, parents generally look at it as uh, a risk factor, especially in Indian communities uh, where uh, the, the social stratification or the caste system and the kind of economic discrimination that happens, uh, usually there can be a lot more worries and fears associated with that. Of course, they have concerns about their child's uh, uh, future, but then at the same time, it's also important to uh, look at it more, how mature they are looking at uh, these kind of, uh, um, as a personality wise, how mature when they are choosing uh, consciously that these are all the aspects that they need to keep in mind when it comes to a cross-cultural adjustments, uh, then I think uh, the parents uh, should be a little more open-minded to look at it more from an acceptance and uh, possible perspectives uh, whereas if it comes to a narrow down feeling that uh, they can never adjust and there can be a possible separation in the, in the uh, very short period because uh, uh, we are grown up in a different culture and then my child cannot adjust to these kind of cultures can only make uh, the couple's adjustment much more uh, difficult. And then it can bring in uh, uh, more challenges, not only from a familial perspective, but also from the community adjustment perspectives. So, so in counseling, mainly it is uh, it, the, the counseling depends on who is approaching for counseling. Is it the couple or is it the parents? Most of the times the angster who has chosen to go for a cross-cultural uh, uh, union does not usually willing to come for any counseling because it is mainly the parents uh, in our setting. Uh, in Indian context, it is the parents who are uh, looking at it as a, a difficult or unacceptable kind of a situation. While um, it, it need not always, I have also seen parents uh, who are much more open and then they are willing to look at it as uh, uh, the happiness of the children and uh, they, are, they are more confident in uh, looking at that um, uh, their children have chosen with uh, much more maturity and then uh, they feel proud about it. So there are all kind of reactions associated with that. But the fact remains that more and more marriages are moving towards these kind of uh, intercultural or cross-cultural uh, it, it, it is uh, more important that one need to have a little more open view about such marriages. So this is what I wanted to share in today's video. Hope this could be of little uh, uh, informative to those who have uh, interest in understanding these kind of marriages and those, who, those couples who are um, in uh, such marriages and then um, uh, this is all uh, for today. Thank you so much.